Love is a straitjacket. You're waiting for someone else to tighten. I'm fresh out the ground zero of a breakup with apologies stitched vertically down my left wrist. I move out my ex-girlfriend's house before she gets evicted. Just another waiter with a misanthropic streak and cheap tattoos he buys with tips. I'm saving up for crashing in any couch I can beg for or any bed I can charm my way into. I'm homeless, <laughs> hopping from couches to BART stations. I got an appetite for destruction that could use dessert. The night I meet her, it's a slow night at Van Cleef's on Telegraph in Oakland. The saxophone player six drinks in, slurring blues to the empty street. I'm writing poems on bar napkins. The ink keeps blurring through with the whiskey. I can't afford a psychiatrist, so Jameson's gonna have to pick up the slack. My future's laid out in front of me, like a railroad track I tied myself to. I don't know what's gonna fix anything, except the deposit, two months rent, and anything that's gonna help me forget today. And then in walks my future. <laughs> Damage in a dress. I can smell her perfume even before I see her. Cinnamon mixed with cigarettes. She doesn't look like the other girls in this bar with their thrift store fashion sense and cheap flower prints to compliment the umbrellas in their drinks. No. She's got eyes dark as a black hole, lips red as an opening curtain. She asks me what I'm writing. I hold up the ink blurred napkin. It's my autobiography drenched in whiskey. Art imitates light. She touches my scorpion tattoo and I say some pretentious shit like poison should always be labeled. She says she's a Scorpio herself. Says her name is Sid, short for something she doesn't want to tell me. She says she just got back in town from a year alone in the mountains as she takes kickboxing classes and is working on her photography portfolio. She asks if I want my next round here or alone with her in a mansion. <laughs> Easy question. We pull up to a house high in the Oakland Hills, buzz open a gate and go up a three-story staircase. The whole city of Oakland's laid out underneath us. Daddy's liquor cabinet has got scotch an Irishman can't pronounce. Oh, thank you. She pours me a cognac, takes it down to the basement to show me her portfolio. Every picture is a self-portrait of her standing naked on a box as if the scarlet letter was written in an alphabet across her flesh. She holds up the biggest print. It's a photograph of her blindfolded in front of a mirror. She says this is how she sees herself. She says she loves how it takes days for photographs to develop like watching a scar heal. Upstairs, I toast to the ashes of the past. She says, we can be as loud as we want and smashes her glass against the wall and shatters across the living room and she grabs my hand, puts it around her throat and says, you won't break me, but I want you to try. <laughs> she kisses me like anger is an aphrodisiac. We hit our carpet, our bones crashing into each other like a wet car wreck. After, she blows smoke rings at the ceiling, tells me I can stay. I was just the right blend of poverty and horny. You see, when you're drowning, a partner can make you feel like you're swimming instead. Every night starts to get a little more physical. Slap boxing becomes our foreplay. We spar for fun in the living room, wrestle till we hit the wall so hard that paintings fall. She wants a knife to her throat. She wants me to love her like I want to kill her. Self-destruction is lonely. She's turned it into a duet. One night, she traces my rib cage with her fingers, shows me with her fingernail where she cut out my heart and keep it with her. I tell her, this is moving a little fast. She says, restraint is for hospitals and cops. Don't hold myself back. Yeah, I need a breath, a break. I haven't seen some of my friends for a couple weeks. A buddy keeps asking me why I pick poison. I tell him it's because I've learned to love the taste. Maybe I should try something else. So I go on a date with a librarian. A quiet girl wants to discuss Dickinson and Dostoevsky. She paints watercolors and writes poems about weeping willows. We go to a cafe and kiss over a cup of tea. And as I sit there and sip the chamomile, I think about a different life, an easy life of doing yoga in the mornings and being nestled against each other. Life of sanity and stability and... Yeah, no. 
I tell you, I was still hungry for that girl in the mansion who can make me feel like every night was my last one on earth. So I kissed the librarian goodbye. More sugar next time. Catch the bar train back to Oakland. And at Van Cleef's, there's Sid sitting in her same seat. She says, I knew you weren't growing anywhere, but back to me. Just don't do it again. Three rounds of Greyhounds later, and we're back at her house, and she's pouring champagne down my chest. It's back to high times of low lives until she breaks a wine glass and begs me to carve my name in her chest, to brand her, to make my words become flesh. She says the flesh is weak, but love is permanent. This isn't love. This is a tango that's turning into a mosh pit. The deeper we go, the harder it's gonna be to find the surface. This time I take a break for a week, go back to waiting tables. So my hostess tells me that I got a new table in my section and what do you know, it's Sid with a bandage on her arm. She unwraps it and it's a scorpion tattoo exactly the same as mine. She says she had to draw it from memory. She says that poison should always be labeled. She says, now we're reflections of each other. She puts a bag on the table, inside is a pair of handcuffs. She says it's an invitation to come commit a crime. But she's my reflection, I wonder what I'm scared to see. She says that premeditation will ruin the surprise. Uh, all right. <laughs> we pull up outside of a cafe, she turns off the car and points inside. I look through the cafe window. It's a librarian girl I kissed a week ago, sipping tea. Uh, what the fuck is this? Sid says I can stop a crime if I want to. That if I didn't kiss that girl a week ago, we wouldn't even be here right now. I, I'm sorry, are you saying that you're fucking stalking me, Sid? She assures me it's only because she missed me. But if I don't stop her, she's gonna march into that cafe and beat the unholy living shit out of that girl while I watch in front of everybody. She says I can try to stop her by force, but I'd have to go to prison first. She unlocks the car doors and says, but there's an easy fix to this, an easy fix. All I have to do is tell Sid I love her and I'll prevent a crime. I'm in a game I don't know the rules of anymore. I tell Sid I love her, I lie. We pull away from the cafe as it's fading in the rear view. We pull up outside of a hotel where she's already got a room with champagne waiting in an ice bucket. She throws her body down on the bed and says, I know you're mad, but now you can punish me any way you want. Nobody knows we're here. We're alone in this room. Someone could fucking die tonight. I feel sick. She's a spider in skin. She says, anyone can learn to love anyone. It just takes time. She says that my time is running out. I pour the champagne on the floor, wield the bottle as a weapon. Sid, I'm walking out of this room. Don't follow me. Don't fucking come to my work again. She doesn't stop smiling, but her eyes are blinking at a weird rhythm like a TV set starting to fritz. You'll come back, she says. I tell her, I'll never see you again. I fucking wish I believed me.